Hello, everybody, and ho hello to those at home. It's great to be able to meet together, isn't it? It's really great to gather together in the presence of Jesus. Um, my Bible readings have been taking me to Revelation recently, and it's not, not a book that I've read a lot because it's, it's uh, somewhat awesome, but um, it, I've been very inspired in reading it, and we're going to dip into Revelation this morning. So I'll just give you a bit of a background to it. Um, it was probably written by the Apostle John, who also wrote John's Gospel, and John is the one, he refers to himself in the gospel as the one whom Jesus loved. And he's often portrayed as being one of two or three who take a special place when there's something particularly miraculous going on. Revelation was written about 60 years after Jesus' death. And at that time, John was an established leader of the church in Asia. When he wrote it, he wrote it um, from exile. He'd been banished because of his Christian faith to a little island called Patmos, which is off the coast of Greece. And the Christians at that time, they were living expecting Jesus to return, but they had thought that Jesus' return was going to be imminent. It was going to be within their lifetimes. Some of them had started to lose heart and to grow weary, and obviously their, one of their main leaders was in exile, as I've, as I've said. So Revelation begins with letters from Jesus himself to seven churches. And they were the seven churches that John would have been probably overseer of in Asia. And um, I learned recently that they, the order that the letters are written in is the order that a messenger would have gone in as he was taking this uh, scroll to the churches. So it's in order of how he would have traveled geographically. So it's addressed to seven churches, and we'll look at it in a moment. Um, but it's very, obviously, Revelation is very symbolic. And the number seven is the number of completion which tells us that it's not just a message for then, it's a message for now. It's a message for the church of Jesus as a whole. So it's our responsibility, isn't it, to listen to the message of God and to be open to the Holy Spirit to reveal things to us, how we can apply it today. But we need to remember that it is a poetic book, it's visionary, it's not to be applied literally. As I said, it's full of symbolism and figurative language, and a lot of it would have been very familiar to the first readers. It's not familiar to us, so we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us as we read and listen to it. But primarily, it's written to capture the imagination, and it's, it's, to, um, it's to get us thinking and it's vivid to us today, but think of it as being something which is symbolic and, and figurative. But we do need its perspective. We need to be able to have that consideration of eternity. So it's pointing us to eternal life. And we need to be able to look at the main ideas, not, being, not getting taken up with focusing on details. So... At that time, Christians were suffering, and of course, Christians today are suffering in some places, and some people amongst us have suffered in, in this way. But all Christians are engaged in spiritual warfare. We're not, we're not told we're going to have an easy time. Um, we need to be able to have a, 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 an eternal perspective and to see that what we experience today is preparing us for that better day when Jesus comes again. So the book of Revelations begins with messages which are really profound but are very foundational to our faith. And if we could have the first scripture, please, Nick. Revelation 1, 4 to 8. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is 
and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So Jesus is alive. He, he was on earth and he will return. He has risen from the dead. So he, he died in the tomb and he was the first one to be risen from the dead. And we know people, don't we, who've gone before us and we know that Jesus will come again and this is our hope. And we need to remind ourselves of these things. We're not living for today. We're living for that glorious hope. Jesus is the Lord of history. So he's got the key of destiny. And when he comes, he's going to bring justice to the earth. He has, he's on the throne and he is king of history. Whatever is going on around us, Everything is in God's hands. And his love and his care for his people is unfailing. It's never changing. Whatever happens on earth, these truths will remain. Jesus is our saviour and he has freed us from our sins by his blood. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to be a sinner forgiven by Jesus. I'm so grateful that he's made us a kingdom. We look forward to his kingdom. His kingdom is coming, but we pray, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And he is giving us a part to play here and now on this earth in bringing in his kingdom. So we have a glimpse of what it will be like in eternity. So he's, he's coming again and every eye will see him. He is the first. He was there at creation. He is the word of God. He is the alpha, the, the beginning, the omega, the end. And every eye is going to see him. And hidden in that message is the sense that we need to be ready. It's an urgent message. So Jesus is coming soon. We need to be ready for him. We need to live every day for his kingdom. We need to trust in him because he is, he is Lord of all. So as we live, we're living, wanting to usher in the kingdom of God. And I'm asking myself and asking you, how can we do that? How can we be ready for Jesus? How can we live for his kingdom every day? Yesterday, um, when I was waking up and I was letting myself go back to sleep again because it was Saturday... Um, and I was dreaming. I did go right back to sleep, and I was dreaming. And in my dream, I was speaking about my husband. I won't look at him. Um, and I was saying, he's always ready to serve. And that's true. Um, yeah, I could say a lot about that. But when Nigel was when Nigel's small, his mother said to him, um, are you ready? We're going out soon. And he said, I'm ready already. It's become a bit of a thing. We're ready already. 
the manner of our life, the way that we live, has a deep impact on our spiritual lives. Whether we can be disciplined to um, disciplined in our minds, disciplined in our living, we have to train ourselves. I'm naturally less disciplined than my husband in some regards. He's the one who know is punctual and so on. Um, I've had to learn, and I'm I'm learning. Um, but I know that one of the challenges to me and to you is to use our time well, is to seek Jesus, is to ponder the things of God. Do you have a vision to serve? If we are ready to serve those around us, if we're ready to serve Jesus in whatever way we feel him calling us to day by day, then surely that is us ushering in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, as you do this to the least of these, my disciples, you do it to me. Your service, everybody who's been a Christian for any length of time, whether it's a short time, whether it's a long time, your service of yesterday, your service of today, your service of tomorrow, it counts. It's not forgotten. It's not in vain. You are going to reap the fruit of your works, your service. Could we have the next scripture, please? Revelation 1, 12 to 16. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in full strength. So we're told here that Jesus, the Son of Man, he stands in the middle of the seven lampstands. The seven lampstands represent the seven churches, as I said. And Jesus is in the middle, in all his power, in all his glory. There's so much in those verses, isn't there? You could think and think on them. And yeah, let's do that. Let's do that in our own time. Let's consider the Lamb of God, the one who is almighty, the one who is all pure, the one who is all glorious, the one who loves you, the one who loves me. No true Christian or Christian group is ever going to be abandoned or isolated. Jesus is there in the middle of his church, his beloved ones. His voice, like the sound of many waters, a two-edged sword in his mouth, his face like the sun, shining in full strength. Can we consider that at all? The other day, there was a partial eclipse, and I was fortunate enough, I was outside with a child in, um, at school, and suddenly remembered, and I have to say, I looked up, which I shouldn't do, but it was amazing. I saw this partial eclipse, and it was amazing. It was glorious. That was a partial eclipse. We cannot look at the sun, the physical sun, with our naked eyes. How can we consider Jesus? How can we consider his glory? He is all glorious. I would have the next scripture, please, Nick. All the churches will know that I am he who searches mind and heart, and I will give to each of you according to your works. So God searches our minds and our hearts. It's not enough for us just to read and to hear or even to acknowledge 
the word of God to us. We need to cherish the word of the Spirit, to purposefully hold what the Holy Spirit has spoken to us in our memories, maybe spend time reflecting on the word of God to us today, maybe looking back, seeing the word of God to us at this time, how much is it still applying today? How much have I moved into it? Maybe writing things down, I find that really helpful to keep a journal. But apply the word of God as you hear it, when you're reading the Bible, when you're listening to the word, when you are hearing what your friend is speaking. Maybe a time when you were prayed over for something particular. Bring these things back to mind. We had in the hymn earlier about the Ebenezer, that's the remembrance of God's mercy. That is the reminder of what God has said, what God has spoken. So we need to apply our minds to what God has spoken to us. We need to cherish it for our affections to be taken up with the word of God, with the Holy Spirit, and then to aim to practice what he brings to us, to remember it in our daily living. If we could have the next scripture, please. So Revelation 3. I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. It's much on my heart that as a congregation, as individual members, we need to purposefully hold fast to what we have gained. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. If you're thinking back about lessons learned, about mistakes made, but hold on to the real word of God. What has your life been built on? What revelations has the Holy Spirit brought to you? Hold fast to these things. Has God's word been spoken over your marriage or over your ministry, over your leadership? Bring these things back to mind. Test the word of God. Let what he says, what is said, sink into your heart. Receive his word again and then let it equip you to serve him. As you hold fast the word of God, the word of the Holy Spirit, you are welcoming in the kingdom of God. And are you seeking God for today? Are you open to his new, now, living word to you? Do you need support in any particular area of your life? Is there something for which you need prayer? You need new release or healing or forgiveness? Seek God and ask for prayer. Let's be active in speaking God's word of life to one another. I'd like to um, finish by sharing some scriptures which were given to me when I was baptised. Um, sort of doing a, a clear out with the children having moved on. And uh, I came across my baptism words. And one of the scriptures that was given to me was Proverbs 3. And I'll read it to you. I'll have to put my glasses on. <laughs> it's in my small print handwriting. Let not, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them round your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. As Kev said, 
earlier, worship refreshes, doesn't it? When we gather together here, there's such joy, isn't there? Being in the presence of God, worshipping him, contemplating the day that is to come, contemplating the kingdom of God, the purity of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, his overcoming power. And as we also, in our daily lives, hold his word in our hearts, that word is refreshment and life to us. It will strengthen, it will give energy, it will give energy to our ministries, to our service. It gives us the dawn of a new day. And I'm really grateful every day is a new day. Let's just pray together. Lord, just thanking you so much for your living word, thanking you for the inspiration in the Bible, thanking you that your Holy Spirit life is, is portrayed to us here, living on this earth. Thank you that your word stands and is sure. Lord Jesus, we worship you because you are the firstborn of the, of the dead. You have risen from the dead. Lord, we worship you because you are all glorious and yet you know our hearts, you know our minds and you speak your word of life into our hearts. Lord, we say, would you help us to be really open to you, really open to your word for today and your word for tomorrow and always looking forward to your coming. Jesus, we say, come soon. Lord, help us be ready. Let your kingdom come. In Jesus' name, amen.